Hi everyone, Wally Nichols here with Asset Guidance Group. Wanted to discuss a head-to-head -head comparison today with the uh, tax-deferred account, a 401k, traditional IRA, that type of thing, versus the uh, LIRP or the uh, Fixed Index Universal Life Policy. We call it LIRP because it's a subset of uh, FIULs. We, we drill down in um, to certain specific categories, uh, internal cost triggers and performance mechanisms within, I mean, the, the FIUL, there's a, there was a myriad of fixed index universal life selections available in the financial services industry. Well, what we're looking for is specific criteria uh, to be satisfied. You can get that in David McKnight's book, Look Before You LERP, uh, Look Before You L-I-R-P. And, um, and uh, if you'll click the link below, I'll send you a free copy of that uh, when we get finished here. But I wanted to show you a head-to-head -head comparison because some people were, are, were giving me feedback. You know, I want to know more about the LIRP even after I've given them the uh, uh, Look Before You Lerp book by, uh, by McKnight, okay, a colleague of mine. And so uh, let, me, let me go through here. I have to, because of the camera set up, I have to kind of turn my head to the other screen here because for some reason the screen compression when I put it on this one so I can speak directly to you I can't see it and it won't it won't allow you to see the entire screen technology okay that's uh, life in the, uh, in the in the year of uh, COVID right anyway all right let's let's drill down on this and uh, let's look at the um, at the qualified plan uh, input uh, data okay and the, the qualified plan input data let's let's assume we have a 50 year old male uh, that intends to retire at age 65. Uh, he's got a uh, he, he's got a for simplicity's purposes here. I'm I'm going to just uh, uh, say that he's not got an ongoing contribution. I can do that in another video. I just want to do a heads to head straight up uh, here. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is say he's got 389,242 dollars in that. And let's say he's separated from that employer, starting a new plan. So he's starting over uh, at zero. But what was what he going to do? The decision would be go to no go with this 389,242 in the tax deferred account. Okay, or the qualified plan. All right. So the qualified plan is that plan where you don't pay any taxes until you yet yeah, start withdrawing the money or taking required minimum distributions. Okay. Here, he's going to start withdrawing the money for this model at age 65 or 15 years from now. Okay, so uh, just to keep things straight up, uh, I'm going to I'm going to credit this at uh, 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 6.37. I think is where we need to be at right here. And so we're going to put in 6.37, and we're going to use the 4% rule uh, in terms of withdrawal rates. Okay, uh, I've given you a static amount of 389,242. He's going to grow the money for 15 years at that consistent rate. So this is stock market stuff. We never have it down here. We're going to average 637 the whole time. All right, 637 basis point a year. Uh, and then when he turns 65, we're going to withdraw money for 15 years until he reaches age 80. And somewhere between age 80 or 81, he's going to have either a long-term care event or he's going to tip over dead for the purposes of this model. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty. That's the beauty. That's not COVID, by the way. It's just allergies. Um, I've been ate ate some food that uh, I wasn't supposed to. It gave me a little congestion. But uh, anyway, the um, the purpose of this is uh, that's the beauty uh, in the in the modeling world is that you can you, you can do these kind of things, all right, without anybody getting hurt. Okay, all right. Enough of that. So here's what happens here, and and we'll see that uh, over the t over the years, the 15 years at 6.37 percent. His total qualified plan balance at age 65, so he's going to start uh, distrib taking distributions at age 66, January 1 of that year. Really discreet here. Okay, so we're getting 15 full years of growth. All right, so 982, 895, just shy of $983,000. A tax liability, 24% uh, uh, federal uh, rate, and then uh, let's just say for round number, 6% on the state. So a composite tax rate effective, 30% bracket is going to make him pay just shy uh, of uh, $295,000 in tax liability, as you can see right here. And then the net uh, qualified plan balance then, after paying the tax, is going to be 688026 
and then he's going to be able at 4% to withdraw $27,521 a year or $2,293 a month. That's going to give him over that 15 year period $412,816 for for lifestyle. That's going to be the income over that 15 year period, okay? All right. Now, let's do let's show the LIRP inputs uh, for that. So the same thing, we're going to pay into this uh, plan for 15 years. Life expectancy after he starts making withdrawal 15 more years, okay? So the annual withdrawal amount from that, uh, this illustration that I ran, is going to be 28,956, 28,956, a little bit higher than the qualified plan. Okay, monthly income from the IUL then was going to be $2,413. And I'll show you the sexy uh, app uh, uh, summary page here in a sec. I just want you to understand the inputs here, the variables here, okay? Now, total premium investment then over the period is $202,401. Now, what did I say he started off the uh, qualified plan with, right? About a hundred thousand more than there, or, or almost two hundred thousand more than this. Okay, so this is going to be around fifty-six percent, fifty-two, fifty-six percent. I've done the math on another detail page. Anyway, so this is going to be about thirteen thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars per year. Uh, the, the contribution into the LIRP, the cash surrender value at the end uh, when he turns age 80, 81 is going to be two hundred ninety-eight thousand four twenty-eight with a still a death benefit. See, that's the component. You get triple, quadruple duty dollars out of these LIRPs. That's why we find them so attractive, okay? 345, 437 when he tips over dead at age 80, uh, 81, or has a long-term care event. Now stay with me here. The charges, now a lot, most people like your gurus, uh, Clark Howards, your Susie Ormans, those guys, Ramsey, Dave Ramsey, uh, they're gonna say, look, we don't like the, uh, 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 life insurance policies because they're front heav heavily loaded on the front end with costs, okay? And that's only part of the story. Yes, year one, they are, okay? But are we just doing this year one? We're not doing that for the qualified plan, so it's not fair. It's not, pro it's not intellectually honest to only look at one year's worth of costs. You have to spread those costs over the entire term. And when we do that, any type of alternative investment is going to be front loaded. That's just the nature of the industry. That is the marketing costs, the administrative costs, all of those things, the risk pool costs. They have to recoup those costs early on in order to spread the risk out over the period. Because in this scenario, this type of an alternative investment pays a death benefit. Now, if you if if I give you an alt uh, investment that's real estate oriented, you're going to pay heavily up front maybe seven, 10% up front that first year, it's not gonna be liquid. You're not gonna be able to get your money out even five years on down the road. Uh, they'll usually piecemeal it out to you. And if you die in between times, it just, the, the balance goes to your, uh, your trust or your, your heirs and beneficiary or your estate. But here, in this type of an alternative investment, you're gonna have a death benefit specifically denominated as such. So that in the early years, this is going to be very high. The death benefit on, on this policy was going to be 350000 early on. So if he's paid in how much? 13493 in year one has a bad accident in year two. He gets a tremendous return on, or his estate does, a tremendous return on investment of, uh, you know, of $355,000 or thereabouts, whatever that it was on the early years. So this is why it's front end loaded. So we have to be intellectually honest about the analysis if we're going to have that discussion. And so here I'm saying spread over the entire 30 year period. He's contributing for 15 years and then he's withdrawing for 15 years before he has the life event at age 80, 81, either tips over debt or has a long term care event. Okay. Now that's $10,000. It's $10,010 at age 80. That's that's the cost at the end of that year in this policy, okay? Um, that's that's uh, that's not a lot spread out. That's probably around 26 basis points on the average, okay, over the, over the period. So uh, um, that's 
that's you can't even buy an ETF that's uh, that's that low per year, 26 basis points a year. Now, anyway, all right. So enough of that. But uh, let me go back here. Let me tell you that the uh, cash value internal rate of return turns positive in year eight. Uh, the uh, uh, cash value internal rate of return at age uh, 80 uh, is seven and a half point seven point five three internal rate of return. The death benefit, if uh, if he tips over dead at that point, is seven point seven eight percent. What's the internal rate of return? That's a go 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 no go uh, decision maker that says if an investment yields a positive uh, internal rate of return, then it's worth while pursuing. If it's a negative uh, internal rate of return, then it's not. So for eight years, this is not. Uh, it, 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 it's 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 a it's a negative internal rate of return unless the client dies prematurely. Okay, but after age eight, uh, eight years in the policy, the investment's aged eight years. It is a positive uh, internal rate of return regardless. Okay, so even the cash value. At that point, it's positive. The only next question would then be, uh, as compared to another investment, is what's the positive rate of return on the other investment? Well, here we know that the qualified plan is going to have a positive rate of return by its nature. However, he is not pulling money out at age uh, eight, 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 eight years into the plan, and is he? No, no, he's, he's waiting 15 years. So if we view the LIRP as a kind of a dill death do us part type of a, a, a investment, then on a head-to-head -head basis, let's look at this summary here, okay? All right, so we've got a 30% a, a composite tax rate. The, um, and then the reason that I'm, that I'm showing the 6.37, I don't know that I put it over here, but let me tell you that the, uh, the detail on on the um, LIRP would only allow, their actuaries would only allow me to illustrate a 6.37% return year over year with the LIRP uh, for conservatism's sake, okay? And so I'm going to, to be uh, fair, I'm going to credit uh, the qualified plan at the same growth rate, okay? 6.37 year over year. <laughs> so what happens, excuse me, at the uh, 15 years to fund, 15 years to distribute. So it's going to grow 15 years, and then it's going to distribute. Okay, so the plan balance then, at the end of the period, like I said, was just shy of 983000 and he's going to pay 295 just shy $1,000 worth of taxes, leaving a net balance in the plan to live off of, 688000 okay? That again was a qualified plan withdrawal per year of 27521 based upon the 4% uh, the rule, okay, 4% a year withdrawal. That's going to translate to $2,293 per month in income. So over the 15 years, until he reaches age 80, 81, he's going to withdraw then, look here with me, uh, 412816 just shy of $413,000, okay. And at life expectancy, at the end of the day, when he, if he tips over dead, uh, $275,211 is left. Now, that's either going to be left for him to live on and pay uh, and, and an institution, because our, our, our model was this, our, our, our assumption was this, at age 80, 81, he's either going to tip over dead, in which case the 275 goes to heirs and beneficiaries or charitable legacy, or he has a long-term care event, in which case the 275 goes to pay for the long-term care expenses, okay? Now, let's look at the LIRP. Now, that withdrawal rate on the LIRP beats him out pretty nicely here, 28956 a year. So he's getting $2,413 a month versus $2,293. And total potential income over the period, 434340 So he's $21,524 better off, more money, with the LIRP. All right. Now, let me just make this point again. This is 52%. The LIRP is 52% of the amount of money that he has invested in the qualified plan. So it's almost a two to one ratio, yet the LIRP outperformed 
the qualified plan. You see what I'm saying here? All right, so in order for the qualified plan to match it, it would have had to have grown to over a million dollars. That would have left a net balance of just almost $724,000, and it has to grow at 6.73% in order to keep pace. That's with never a down year in the market. So if you're going to average 6.73% over a 15-year period, you've got to be taking some uh, enormous risk, okay? Because some years is going to be down, down years. We know that historically. Some years are going to be up years. But in order to balance out at a 6.73%, you're going to be 100% invested in equities, and you're going to have to be very well invested in that uh, in those equities to get to 673 and you're using twice the money so you have an opportunity cost there so I'm giving you this at age at age 50 to 65 most most rules of thumb are one minus one minus your age goes into uh, um, uh, equities and the, and the balance is in is in fixed income alternatives since the fixed incomes alternatives are not going to perform this way then the LIRP is the best bond substitute. That's why I call it an alternative uh, investment. It's a bond alternative, okay? Here, it made 21524 more. Why? Because there's no risk of loss of principal uh, in the LIRP. An indexed uh, policy, by definition, uh, has no risk of loss. I've got another, how does that work? I've got another, it's not a gimmick. I've got another video on that that's uh, in my series you just need to check it out the withdrawal percentage on the qualified plan has to be more than double so at a four percent rate in order to match the LIRP the withdrawal percentage has to be 9.7 percent Wow if you were drawing that every year and you have a down year you're even if you're making consistently 6.37 you're basically going to start depleting principles so in order to in order to compare head to head with the LIRP the qualified plan had to make over a million had to have a balance of 724 after taxes had to had to uh, earn 6.73% so it had to earn 40 basis points per year more than the LIRP and it had to withdraw a rate of 9.7% year over year for 15 years. And get this, get this. Remember, the LIRP was only was was about half, 52% of the amount uh, initially invested. Okay, really good deal. The excess. Uh, well, let's say that they tipped over dead or the long-term care. We have we looked at that on the uh, on the qualified plan. Let me finish up on the LIRP. So if he tips over dead, his estate gets $345,437 after having withdrawn $434,340 to live on all those years, okay? If he has to go into long-term care, he's got $345,437 to pay for the long-term care. And spread that if the average is two and a half to three years in there. My dad, uh, I can tell you that my dad spent uh, uh, six years and ten months. That story is in this book, Pack a Sweater. Uh, shoot me an email at info at assetguidancegroup.com if you'd like a free copy of that. I'll send it to you. The excess death benefit here, though, over the qualified plan at life expectancy is over $70,000 more. So if you're in a long term care event, that's almost another year. At $7,000 a month, that's 10 more months of long-term care expenses that have been paid, okay? There you go. That's heads up. That's head to head. If you'd like some more information on this, you can learn more by joining or subscribing to a membership in my uh, master class, okay? Click the button below and it'll tell you more about it. I've enjoyed bringing this to you. You guys stay happy and healthy, okay?